Ever wonder how yogurt is made? Or thought, can I make this at home? It's gotta be super hard and time consuming, right? Even if I can do it, am I gonna save any money and what are the benefits? Well, making yogurt takes only two ingredients and it basically makes itself. So stick with me and I'll show you how to make fresh, packed full of probiotic yogurt that is not only delicious and healthy, but will save you a lot of money. Hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing you've maybe thought about making yogurt at home. And I also know that making yogurt can seem very intimidating because honestly, I was intimidated and I still am, especially when starting a different culture. But I gained a lot more confidence over time and have a much better understanding of my process. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. So why would you even want to do this when it's so easy just to grab a container at the store. Well, if you're eating yogurt for the health benefits, you may be surprised to find out that some of the brands that you buy at the store contain extra ingredients and all kinds of preservatives and lots of sugar. And some, they don't even have the live cultures that make yogurt, well, yogurt. And you can save a lot of money, especially if you eat it regularly. Making yogurt at home really is one of the easiest things you can do. And truly, I've never had store-bought that tastes as good as what I can make at home. Plus, you can adjust the timing of, you know, how long you let it incubate to make it as mild or as tangy as you like. And you only need two ingredients, milk and bacteria. And the bacteria part is not as difficult or as scary as you might think it is. So let's go through some of the quick info before I show you the process. Okay, here is where I'm gonna go and get into some stuff, uh, some terms and technical info that may cause some of you to glaze over. It is important in understanding the why behind why you do certain things when making yogurt. But if you wanna skip to the video chapter on making yogurt, go ahead and do that now. You can always come back here later and get the rest of the information. All right, so first, what is yogurt anyway? Yogurt is a food made by bacterial fermentation of milk. Now, why the heck would you wanna add bacteria to milk? I mean, isn't that why we pasteurize milk? Is so we can get rid of the bacteria and all kinds of nasty stuff? Absolutely. But heating milk not only kills bad bacteria, and toxins, but it also kills the good ones and reduces some of the nutritional value. It's why you see on the label on most milk that states it's been fortified, meaning after heating, the manufacturer adds back some of those lost vitamins and minerals. But when we ferment milk, the bacteria naturally preserves food, resisting spoilage and toxin development, and it also increases the nutritional value of that food. If you're interested in understanding fermentation, I do have a video on fermenting chicken feed called The Truth About Fermented Chicken Feed. I know, I know you're here about making yogurt, but that video has a ton of info uh, specifically on how lactic acid fermentation works and the principle applies to human food as well. So it's the same information, I'm just using it for chicken feed. And I'll throw that link up at the end of this video or you can find it in, in the search feed. In order to make yogurt, you need to have a bacterial culture. There's an overwhelming amount of cultures you can buy, but they all fall into two categories, thermophilic and mesophilic. Thermophilic yogurt is made with bacteria that thrives at warmer temperatures. The name comes from the Greek thermo, meaning heat or hot, and philic meaning loving. So they are heat loving bacteria and they like temperatures between 90 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Mesophilic yogurt, on the other hand, comes from the Greek meso, meaning middle. So those bacteria are middle temperature loving and they grow at room temperature. Um, it's the Goldilocks of yogurt you could say, not too hot, not too cold. They like it between 70 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Technically, mesophilic yogurts aren't truly yogurts. They're not true yogurts. They're soured milks. 
but they're marketed as yogurts. So I feel it's important uh, to know that, especially when you're looking at buying cultures, because they're gonna be listed in those two separate categories. As for getting your hands on these bacteria, uh, you have two choices. The first is by purchasing yogurt at the store. Seriously, store-bought yogurt is essentially a culture, but you need to make sure you buy plain yogurt that uses live active cultures and doesn't have any additives like sweeteners, flavors, or thickeners. So if you go this route, just make sure you really look at the label and those things are there or aren't there rather. The other way is you can purchase your culture. And by buying a culture, you get so many options. You can choose what flavor profile you want. Do you want something tangy? Do you want something mild? Do you want something thick? Do you want something thin? And I get my cultures from a company named Positively Probiotic. I am not sponsored by them. I don't get any money, but that's who I started with and I love the selection I have. But there's a bunch of companies out there that you can buy from, so I definitely would recommend check them all out, but I will put an Amazon link in the description here so you can look at the ones that I particularly went with. I find thermophilic yogurt to be the easiest to make. It does require a heat source for incubation, where mesophilic shouldn't, but I can easily control the temperature in my Instant Pot, the oven if it has a proofing setting, a slow cooker, a sous vide stick, or with a heating pad and towels. Whereas mesophilic yogurts can be a challenge depending on the time of year and the temperature inside your house. Also, thermophilic yogurts are most like what you'll find in the store. They're thicker, whereas the mesophilic cultures tend to be thinner. It's more of a drinking yogurt. Think buttermilk. So if you're totally new to this, I would highly recommend starting with a thermophilic yogurt, but ultimately you know what will be best for you. So it's, it's, you know, you, you may not get it right the first time, so try and have fun with what you're doing. Finally, you'll need milk. And the type of milk will sometimes limit what bacterial culture you should or can use. The questions you need to ask yourself are, are you planning to use cow's milk? Is it gonna be full fat? or low fat? Are you gonna use goat's milk or do you wanna use a plant-based milk? This is mostly a concern if you decide to use a plant-based milk, but it is something to be aware of. Oh, and if you're gonna use raw milk, you'll have to take additional steps to make sure the bacteria that's present in it already doesn't overwhelm the bacteria that you wanna use for your culture. Some other terms you're gonna see when you're looking for a culture are heirloom, and direct set. Heirloom simply means that you can take this culture and use it over and over again indefinitely as long as you don't go too long between making batches. Direct set means they are single-use bacteria. What that means is that you're gonna need to use a fresh starter with each batch you make. So let's get started. If you find this video helpful, I would be so very grateful if you'd hit that like and subscribe button. And that way I can keep providing you with content to help you do those things you never thought you could. In this tutorial, I'm making yogurt from a starter that has already been activated, which simply means that it's already loaded with bacteria and those bacteria are thriving. If you're using store-bought yogurt, this is where you're gonna wanna begin. If you're using a culture you purchased that came freeze-dried like this, you'll need to activate it first. So be sure to check out my video on activating your yogurt starter. I'm gonna be using a mesophilic, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm gonna be using a thermophilic culture named Cream Top. So far, um, this is my favorite. It's creamy and it's mild but you can easily make it more tart and tangy by incubating it for longer. You're gonna need the yogurt starter, the milk of your choice, a pot to heat the milk, a thermometer that is made for liquids, such as a candy thermometer and some meat thermometers. You're gonna need glass jars. Finally, you're gonna need something to keep the milk at a constant temperature. I like to use my Instant Pot, which conveniently has a yogurt function, but you can use a proofer, 
or if your oven has a proofer setting on it, a cooler with warm water and towels wrapped around them, basically anything that's gonna keep heat in for anywhere between eight to 12 hours. The first step is to heat the milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's reached that temperature, which takes about 40 minutes on medium or low heat, you're gonna remove it from the heat and let it cool to between 95 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the part that requires you to be nearby. While this is the part that's a bit of a pain. It is the method I prefer, but if you want to skip the heating and cooling part and you're using cow's milk, keep listening and I'll show you a trick to make it super quick. Once the milk is cooled, you want to remove the skin that develops on top. You can keep the skin from forming if you stir the milk constantly while it's heating, but really who, who has time for that? Then you're gonna add one tablespoon of your yogurt starter, that is either the yogurt you bought at the store or the already activated yogurt from your purchased culture of your choice. You're gonna add one tablespoon of that per cup of milk. Since the jars I'm using hold two cups of liquid, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of yogurt starter to each of my jars. Then just stir the contents. I then lightly place the lids on each jar and put them in the Instant Pot. I add water to the Instant Pot to act as a water bath, then put on the lid. It doesn't matter if it's vented or not, but I keep mine in the open position. I hit the yogurt button, which keeps it warm, for eight hours. You can adjust the time to your liking, but I'd start with eight and then either remove or leave it in for longer. 12 hours is usually the most I've let it go, but you can go longer. Just remember, the longer that you let it in there, the thicker and tangier it will get. Once it's to your liking, let the jar sit out for about two hours and then place them in the refrigerator to chill for about four hours before you go ahead and eat it. Okay. I'm coming in close on this one. Let's be honest, if I got a late start and it's late by the time the yogurt is finished, I am not sitting up for another two hours before putting it in the refrigerator. It really isn't that important, except for the fact that it may make the yogurt taste milder, um, but it's not gonna hurt the bacteria. Setting it out is really just a gentle way to move it from being hot to being really cold in your refrigerator. Now you have fresh, homemade yogurt that's full of probiotics. It really is that easy. And if you don't have the time to heat and cool your milk, you can skip that part by using milk that is ultra filtered. This is called the cold start method. Again, you're looking for a label that shows ultra filtered, not ultra pasteurized. There is a difference between the two and usually ultra filtered milk is sometimes ultra pasteurized, but it's the filtration method that allows you to make yogurt without having to heat the milk first. Using ultra filtered milk allows you to add the yogurt starter directly to it and then place it in your incubation setup. That's about five minutes prep time versus almost four hours. Now I have used the cold start method and it really is so easy, but here's the catch. Ultra filtered milk is much more expensive than regular or even grass fed milk. The other thing is I personally don't like the texture or the taste as much, but that is purely a personal preference. Your finished yogurt will stay good for up to two weeks in the refrigerator, but honestly mine never lasts past a week. But here's the catch. If you're using an heirloom culture, that means one that you can use over and over again, you're gonna need to make a new batch within seven days in order to keep the bacteria from dying off. So if you don't plan on making another batch within seven days, well, all you have to do is freeze some of that yogurt. I use an ice cube tray and place one tablespoon in each little spot. And these yogurt cubes will be good for up to three months in your freezer. And when you're ready to make a new batch, just defrost those cubes in the refrigerator and you're good to go. In fact, I always make sure to freeze after each batch just in case because life happens and I am not always paying attention to how long it's been since I've used my yogurt and I never wanna be without it. And add whatever you want to it. You know, like cherries, raspberries, blueberries. And how much money am I saving? Well, here's the breakdown. It costs about four to $6 for a 32 ounce tub of plain yogurt. I spent about $2 for a half gallon of milk, which is about 64 ounces. So that's twice 
the amount of one tub of yogurt. Obviously, this varies greatly depending on the type of milk you use and the difference in milk prices depending upon where you live because it does vary greatly. I mean, it's not going to cost that cheap. It's not going to be that cheap in Hawaii, I can tell you that. I can make four to six times the amount of homemade yogurt to one store-bought container. I'd say that's pretty darn good, wouldn't you? I really do hope that this video has encouraged you to, to try making your own yogurt at home. And if you have any questions or you wanna share your experiences, please do so in the comments. I love hearing from you. And I always do try um, to answer your questions or comments uh, as, as quickly as I can, although sometimes it may take me an extra day or two depending on what's going on here at the farmstead. But I do hope you all have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me here on Tater Town. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.